Now the next tank we're going to bring on for you, um, this is a tank that's coming on now that uh, was made well after World War II, um, but it's an interesting tank because it can fly. Those big heavy German tanks in World War II like and the Panther and the King Tiger, when the Germans had the opportunity to build a new tank uh, after the Second World War, when the German army was set in motion again, um, they decided to go in the opposite direction. Instead of massive guns, instead of thick armour protection, they decided to go for speed. Now the Leopard tank, when it first went into service, only had armour protection against 30mm rounds, so bigger than a bullet, but not much, not the sort of anti-tank gun size. But what the Germans did, they put a tremendously powerful, you can hear it there, MTU diesel in the back of their vehicle, and they made that vehicle very, very fast. Speed became its protection, so what they were saying is if we drive fast enough around the battlefield, the enemy won't be able to keep up with us, so that's a good approach. They buy the very over time and still keeping the levels of mobility very high. Now the Leopard really replaced the Centurion in a lot of countries' armouries around the world. After World War II, a lot of the Commonwealth countries bought Centurion tanks from Britain. A lot of non-Commonwealth countries came aboard bought the Centurion. When they got rid of their Centurion tanks, on the whole, they tended to buy Leopard tanks as replacement. And in many ways, the Leopard has now become, for many, uh, the European main battle tank. And it's gone through quite a number of marks. This particular Leopard that you're seeing driving now, um, this was actually used by the Canadian Army. And some years ago, the Canadians got to the point where they thought tanks were old hats. And uh, we put up our hands and said, could we possibly have a couple of your Leopard tanks are going out of service. They very kindly gave us two Leopard tanks, um, brought them over here. Then the Canadian Army went off to fight in Afghanistan and decided tanks were still important. And they ended up buying more Leopard tanks, upgrading them, taking them back into service. And uh, thankfully they didn't actually ask for the two they gave us back. But uh, it was a good example for us to show the mobility and the fire it, utility huh? of tanks still to this day, uh, even in countries like Afghanistan. So that was what the Germans built after World War II. Now we're going to bring on for you now the tank that I imagine you're waiting for. This one is the Tiger tank from the Second World War. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Tiger was pushed on the German army. He didn't quite hit that. He wanted the German army to have something much bigger than anybody else, much more powerful, with a very heavy gun. He insisted they took that massive 88 millimeter gun that was used in there, the aircraft gun, put it in the tank, very thick armor plate, 10 centimeters thick at the front of the tank there, and uh, you end up with this very impressively armor plated, very thick gun, but very expensive tank. Now, those of you who have a chance, really to do so often, they would tell you how complex this tank is um, to not only make, but also maintain to keep it going. And uh, because of that, during the war, the Germans could only make 1,300 tigers. And if you put that up against probably about 60,000 Eastern, 60,000 German tigers, there are the awful lot of them around. So it was though, undoubtedly a very, very powerful tank. But in the actual battlefield of the World War II, very few of them appear in combat because they just can't make enough of it. Now the Tiger's got a crew of five inside there. At the moment with the drivers down in the front as you're facing the vehicle, the left hand side, uh, sorry, the right-hand side, the uh, bow machine gunner, the radio operators on the left-hand side, commander, gunner, loader, all in the turret. All those spread out the weight of such a big heavy tank, well over 50 tons. Uh, and the engine in the back, the famous is powering this tank along, 
really designed in the first place for a tank slightly lighter, a 30 tank, and uh, a cause of endless troubles, not only to the crew in World War II, uh, but subsequently. But the truth is, most tank engines on most various tanks cause trouble, it's not this with the Tiger. Many of you know, it was captured in North Africa, in Tunisia, in early 1943. It was uh, the first complete Tiger captured by the British forces, by all the Allied Western forces. And uh, it was seen by Churchill in Tunis, by the King went out there and took a look at it as well. It was brought back to Britain for evaluation. And uh, it came down to the Tank Museum in 1951, and it's been the subject of an ongoing restoration project uh, really for over the last 10 years. We've just done some more work on the tank. We've fitted some something called the fan drives in the back so that we can now authentically turn the fans to keep the engine cool uh, from the engine. And uh, we've just got to say a big thank you to an awful lot of people who've helped us carry on the restoration work on this tank. The Lottery Fund, the Prison Fund, the Wheel Foundation, and uh, probably some of you private individuals here have given us fibers, tenors, all sorts of money to keep the vehicle going. So we're very pleased and thank you for helping support us in keeping this fantastic bit of history uh, mobile and working. Now what we're going to do for you now, we're going to park the tank there for a few minutes and uh, in about 10 minutes time we're going to start it up again and drive it off the arena um, and take it up and put it back inside the museum so that you can go and have a closer look at it. And do please, if you've got the opportunity, talk to, you, talk to some of the chaps that have been helping us, uh, working on the vehicle, uh, that are the engineers that are going to be down there so they can tell you how complex a vehicle it is. Um, uh, but do please, as I mentioned earlier, do keep out the way of the vehicle when it's driving up the road, keep an eye on the dogs and the children so they don't go running out as well. And when these vehicles are parked up, do remember the exhausts are very hot behind them. Uh, we'll have stuff there warning you about it, um, but uh, do remember they're very items there. Now inside the museum for the rest of the afternoon there'll be plenty of other activities, there's talks.